it's a big one. Now, we have a big focus on technologies in iOS 11, but also some really big features. We have a lot to talk about. We're gonna start with messages. Now, you all know in iOS 10, we added iMessage apps and stickers. People have had a lot of fun with these. And now in iOS 11, we're making them more discoverable than ever with this redesigned app drawer. You can see you have your apps accessible right there at the bottom of the screen with just a tap. You can bring them up, scroll through them, and tap into any app. It's really easy. It's gonna make it a lot of fun for you to use your apps and stickers. Now the big story with messages though is messages in iCloud. Because now with your iMessages in iCloud, when you sign in to another new device, well, all of your conversations are automatically synchronized. And in fact, they stay in sync. So if you want to delete an embarrassing message that you don't want in your transcript, well, it goes away everywhere, which is kind of nice. So this, of course, is, uh, allows us to optimize your device storage because with your messages in the cloud, we only need to keep your most recent messages cached on the device. And so that makes for smaller and faster backups now, this is available for iOS and the Mac, and of course, your messages remain end-to-end -end encrypted. Next, Apple Pay. So we love using Apple Pay to buy things at retail. In fact, Apple Pay is the number one contactless, contactless payment <laughs> service on mobile devices, and by the end of the year, it'll be available in more than 50% of retailers here in the U.S. Yeah. But in addition to paying at retail, we use Apple Pay in apps, we use it in the web, and there was one final frontier we wanted to conquer, and that's Apple Pay for person-to-person -person payments. <laughs> now, it's super simple because it's integrated right in to messages as an iMessage app. So you can send and receive money right in your transcript. And of course, when you send it, you authenticate securely with Touch ID. And if you receive money uh, with iMessage, it goes into your Apple Pay cash card. And from there, well, you can send it on to friends and family if you're charitable. You can make <laughs> Apple Pay purchases at retail or on the web. And of course, you can pull it out and transfer it to your bank. And it's available across all these iOS devices and Apple Watch too. Thank you. So next, let's turn to Siri. Now, Siri is used monthly for more than 375 million devices. It's absolutely huge. And it's available in more languages and more countries than any other assistant, 21 languages in 36 countries. So for iOS 11, we're making a big upgrade to your primary interface in dealing with Siri, and that's Siri's voice. We've used deep learning now to create a really natural and expressive voice for Siri, and I'd like you to hear it. Here's the forecast for the next 10 days. Sunny, sunny, and sunny. Three different ways to say sunny. Very powerful. Now, Siri also has a male voice, and it sounds fantastic, too. I love machine learning, especially since I'm a machine learning. So Siri has a great new visual interface as well. And it's able to provide you with follow-up questions and answers with just a tap and multiple results. When you make a query, it's really handy. Now, Siri also has a new capability, just translation. So you can now ask something like, how do you say, what are the most popular dishes in your restaurant in Chinese? And Siri can say, Totally. Now, translation initially will support translation from English to Chinese, French, German, Italian, and Spanish, and we'll have more language combinations coming in the months to come. Now, when it comes to using Siri to access your other applications, we have SiriKit, and SiriKit can now do more than ever in iOS 11. So now, you can do task management by using Siri to make tasks in OmniFocus or Things, take notes in Evernote, do banking in City Mobile, or even bring up a QR code in WeChat. Now, Siri isn't just a voice assistant, because with Siri intelligence, Siri not only understands your voice, it understands the context. 
It understands your interests. It understands how you use your device. And this allows it to ultimately understand what you want next. Now, we've all experienced this where Siri can help us predict what apps we might want to use next, give us a time to leave notification based on our calendar and where we are, help us respond to a text message. In iOS 11, Siri uses on-device learning to understand more about topics of interest to us. So it can actually suggest topics we might be interested in learning about in news. It can help us respond with our location for getting to an appointment to someone in messages and even help us make a calendar appointment based on something we've just booked inside of Safari on the web. And what Siri learns about you on device is now kept synced across all of your devices. So you're dealing with one Siri, but of course, this is kept completely private, readable only by you and your devices. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the camera. People love the fantastic cameras in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. And in fact, our customers now take a trillion photos per year. It's absolutely amazing. And they take a lot of video too, and today they do it in H.264. But now, with our latest iPhones and iOS 7, they get, we're using HEVC, which is giving us up to two times better compression for camera captured videos, which means less storage space used on your device, and less space used in the cloud. And we're applying these same techniques to replace JPEG capture with what we call HEIF, high efficiency image format. It's based on HEVC and it also provides awesome quality images at half the size on your device. And of course, you can still share completely compatibly with others. Now, with the iPhone 7 Plus, we love taking these beautiful portrait photos. And now, with iOS 11, we can take low light photographs using optical image stabilization, true tone flash, HDR, delivers incredible image quality. And we're taking the depth information that we can capture with two cameras and exposing it to developers with a new depth API, which has allowed them to do incredibly fun and artistic photos, like this, uh, Using, using the Depth API. Now, when you're done taking your photos, you go to enjoy them in the Photos app. And one of the ways I love enjoying them is with me the Memories uh, feature, because Memories is able to scan my library and find all kinds of fun events, and now it can do more than ever. It uses uh, machine learning to identify things like sporting events, even weddings, anniversaries, memories of, of your babies. It's really great. And when you go to play those back, you can see them not just in normal landscape orientation, but now watch them in portrait, taking full advantage of the height of your display. Now, when it comes to live photos, we have some great enhancements as well. So you can now trim your live photos, the video around the still. You can mark any part of the video as your key photo and so much more. So these are some of the big features in iOS 11. There's one other, which is a major redesign to Control Center. Rather than show it in slides, how about we do a demo? All right, let's take our first live look. No, I don't want to do that. Let's take our first live look at iOS 11. Now I'm going to just bring up Control Center as always. And what you'll notice is Control Center is now a single page, packs all the features into a single page. Now, of course, it has simple switches. I'll just do an orientation lock. It's got a beautiful little animation there for the orientation lock. It has sliders available, so you can adjust volume like this. But it provides greater depth, because with 3D touch, 3D touch in on a slider like this and get access to more controls. And this allows us to pack lots of capabilities really easily into the design. So you see, we have our wireless controls. Well, I could just tap on airplane mode. But if I 3D touch on the platter, I get access to even more features. And this is really great with your music, because you can operate them here or jump in for even more information. So it's a really great new control center, and I think you're really going to love it. Now, we've also taken this opportunity to redesign lock screen and notification center by making them one. So now, when I'm on my lock screen, if I unlock the device, 
just like that. Uh, I can actually now swipe back down. I'm actually on my lock screen seeing those notifications, but I can get at all my other notifications just by scrolling up like that. It's a really great unification, and you still have access, of course, to your widgets on the left and your camera on the right. Now, let's take a look at photos, these beautiful portrait photos, but also these great live photos. And you know, live photos capture a still, but then also a bunch of video automatically captured around it, and sometimes the best shot wasn't the still. Well, now we can go into edit mode. We could trim this video if we want, but we also can capture just the frame we want and make that our key photo. Now, we can do other really fun things with live photos. Now, here's one great shot, this girl blowing a bubble, but wouldn't it be greater, greater if she could just keep blowing that bubble? Well, now she can. We actually use computer vision to compute a seamless loop around this live photo. It's really fun. And we have another great effect. So here's a fun jump in the pool, but wouldn't it be better if it bounced? There it is. Now, we can really do some artistic things with live photos as well. So you see, this is a, sh a shot where we have still landscape, but then this movement in the water. Now, if you wanted to capture this kind of motion, traditionally, you'd have to get a tripod and figure out how to configure a long exposure on your high-end camera. But now, you can actually just go into the effects here and select long exposure and check it out. It's really gorgeous. Now, let's take a quick look at memories, because you see memories can now capture things like activities, like scuba diving, it can spot your anniversaries, these really touching uh, memories of your children growing up, and most importantly, your pets. Let's play a movie about you know, th these pets. And what we'll see is that we play them, of course, traditionally here in landscape, which is a great way to watch video. And of course, Memories is using computer vision to actually identify photos of your pet and pick the best scenes. Now what's great is I can also rotate my phone now into portrait and it automatically reformats to take full advantage of the height of the display. And that's a quick look at Memories. Now, with memories, we're using machine learning to help learn more about you and what you're interested in by looking at your photo library. But now in iOS 11, Siri does so much more in l learning how you're using your device. So for instance, if I'm in Safari here and I'm reading about uh, Iceland, maybe I'm considering taking a, a trip there. There's uh, Reykjavik as a uh, nice location. Well now, Siri actually on my device spots my interest. So when I go, let's say, into news, Siri automatically surfaces for me a recommendation that I might be interested in news about Iceland. You can just tap in and heart this one like this. And if I tap into a particular article, we can see it mentions certain locations in Iceland. I think this one is called Snæfellsnes. I hope it's okay with anyone who speak, speaks Icelandic. Uh, but what's great is now Siri is learning this vocabulary. He knows it might be something I'm gonna use in my communication in the future. So when I go into messages and start typing a message, and let's say I start typing Reykjavik, well, check it out. It learns that Reykjavik is probably a word I might type. And what about, there it is, Snifelsness. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Now, let's take a look at stickers. Because you notice now, right on the bottom of the display, we have access to all my sticker packs. I can tap in on the bottom here to my Star Wars sticker pack. I can tap and slide, let's say select music. And we now have Apple Pay right here is a Messages app. But what's so cool is if I receive a message saying that I owe someone money, well, you notice the QuickType keyboard automatically surfaces Apple Pay as an option and picks the amount out as what I might want to pay. I can just tap the Pay button, send, and authenticate with my fingerprint, and just like that, I've paid with Apple Pay. And that is a quick demo of iOS 11.
But wait, there is more. It starts with maps. Now in iOS 10, maps brought beautiful new clarity to navigation. And we're now giving you an enhanced information for when you get there to the mall. So we have detailed floor plans now of malls with place cards, directory, and search. And we let you browse by floor. Now we're going to be supporting malls in all of these cities out the gate and hundreds more per month thereafter. And we're also bringing the support to air, major airports. You can see where security is so you can plan. Now, we'll be supporting all of these airports to start and again, building out more over time. And of course, we have more improvements to navigation. So now in the upper left, you can even see your speed limit. I hope you're paying attention to that. And lane guidance, so you know which lane to be in to make your next move when navigating. Now, we know in addition to navigation, people like to do more with their phones sometimes while driving. And our safest solution for doing this is CarPlay, lets you keep your eyes on the road while you're doing things like asking Siri to play music. Well, we wanted to bring this same level of safety to everyone who maybe doesn't have one of the 200 models of car that currently support CarPlay. And we're building on the Do Not Disturb with a new feature we call Do Not Disturb While Driving. And it's all about keeping your eyes on the road. When you're driving, you don't need to be responding to these kinds of messages. In fact, you don't need to see them. So now, when you install iOS 11, we're going to use Bluetooth to understand if you're connected to a car, or even if you don't have Bluetooth. We're going to use Wi-Fi Doppler effect to measure that you're moving in a car. And when you finish that first drive, we're going to suggest, hey, how about we activate Do Not Disturb While Driving? And when we do, instead of seeing all those notifications, we have this new user interface for you. Now, if you're tempted and you try to turn on your phone, you're actually going to receive this. Little reminder that you're not receiving notifications while you're driving. But of course, you might be sitting in the back seat, in which case you can tell us, I'm not driving. You can get through. But what if you are driving and someone sends you a message? Well, they can now get an automatic response saying, I'll see your message when I get where I'm going. And you can also enable select people to break through if it's especially urgent. You can have the peace of mind that you can get contacted they can reply urgent, and that message will go through. We think this is going to be a real important step in safety in the car. <laughs> Next up, HomeKit. So HomeKit provides a secure and private way to automate all of your devices, uh, your home accessories. And you can do it right inside the Home app and control them here. And also, of course, use your voice with Siri. Now, almost all the major accessory makers are providing great HomeKit accessories across all of these categories, from security cameras and door locks to lights and fans. But there's one category really close to our heart that we wanted to add to HomeKit, and that's speakers. So you'll now be able to configure your speakers inside of HomeKit and access them via our new AirPlay 2 protocol. It builds multi-room audio in throughout iOS. So you can play music to select speakers throughout your home, right from the music app. And with Apple Music, we have a new feature called Shared Up Next. So if you have a friend over and you have a playlist going, and maybe your friend wants to contribute to that playlist, well, they can do that without interrupting the music. You all can pile into that party playlist. Now, the, all these speaker makers have announced upcoming support for AirPlay 2. But of course, many of us already own a great AirPlay 2 compatible speaker. And those are the ones connected to our Apple TV. Because now, your Apple TV can be played to from your uh, iPhone or iOS device and Mac anywhere in the home. And of course, if you turn on your Apple TV, it can control playback home-wide, including using Siri. And we're providing a great developer API, so third-party audio apps in iOS can all get in on the multi-room audio fun. Next is Apple Music. Now, last fall, we, we introduced an all-new design for Apple Music, which brought greater clarity and simplicity to the Apple Music experience. 
we now have 27 million customers who are really enjoying the curation as well as the personalization of Apple Music. But of course, a lot of the way we discover music is to ask one of our friends, what have you been listening to lately? So now in Apple Music, you'll be able to find out right inside the application. For all the music served up, for, and for you, you'll see indicators if this is music your friends are listening to, and they can configure their profile, uh, either pu to be public or private, and control what playlists they share, or whether all the music they share they want to make available to their other friends. Now, for developers, we're also providing a new API, Music Kit, for Apple Music. This allows apps full access to the Apple Music service, both on device and from your cloud service. And you can do a tremendous amount with this. Now, Nike has done great exercise playlists using the full Apple Music catalog. With Anchor, anyone can be a DJ using all 40 million songs. And Shazam can automatically add songs to your collection that it identifies. But you know, one of the biggest stories today for iOS 11 is about the App Store. Now, to give you the big news with the App Store, I'd like to hand it off to Phil Schiller. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Well, good morning, everyone. Let's hear it from the way back of the room. Come on, good morning, everyone. Yes. I am so excited to be able to talk to you this morning about the App Store. The App Store is turning nine years old, and it is going so well. There are 500 million weekly visitors to the App Store who come to see your amazing apps and to download them. They have now downloaded over 180 billion apps to date. That's incredible. That, that does not include auto redownloads and updates. Amazing. And just recently we passed $70 billion paid out to developers to date. 30% yes. of that in the last year alone. The apps are incredible, and customers are doing things with them that none of us had ever imagined, like this. These are people in Hong Kong playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> Pokemon Go is from Niantic. It was one of the big hits from last year, and there have been a lot of big hits last year from big developers and indie developers alike. And together, the developers at Apple, we've made this the best app platform in the world. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for the incredible apps you make that we and our customers all love. It's not by chance that the App Store has become such a great place. From the beginning, we've had two very important goals. To make the App Store a trusted and safe place for users, and to make it a great opportunity for all developers. We continue to work really hard at that. Over the last year, the team's done a lot of great things to make the App Store an even better store for all of us. There's many things we can talk about, but I think one stands head and shoulders above the rest. Faster app review times. Yeah. I'm sure you're well aware that the majority of apps are all now reviewed in under 24 hours, many in just one to two hours. The team is going to keep working hard at that. And we have a lot more coming for the remainder of the year. I've highlighted a bunch of things here. I'll just point out one of them. You can read some of your favorite things out there. Uh, a big request from developers is called phased releases. That when you sub yeah, <laughs> woo for phased releases, come on. Phased releases means <laughs> when you submit an app, you can choose if you want it to be phased over time so it doesn't hit your infrastructure all at once, and you can see how customers are responding to that update. So it's a really great feature for you to take advantage of. And there are a lot of things coming this year, but there is, there is one that is incredibly gigantic. And that is we're going to do something that we've never done before in the nine years of the App Store. We're going to completely redesign it. A brand new App Store. It is absolutely beautiful. The App Store starts with a brand new tab called Today. Now, do you remember back the first time you started downloading apps? when you used the App Store, and it was so much fun to go in every single day and discover the new apps that were appearing. I mean, that's an amazing feeling. And we're bringing that back again with this brand new tab called Today, a whole new way to discover apps. It's a place where we can feature 
the apps we all love, and the stories about the developers who created them. It's going to be such a great place for customers to discover your apps every single day. There's another new tab, games. Games, the biggest area of the App Store has its own dedicated space now. So for all of us who loves gaming and finding the best featured games of the day and seeing charts about gaming, this is now a place to go to experience all that's happening with games. And not only can we feature games, but for the first time in the App Store, we can feature in-app purchases as well. A big part of your business is now there in the App Store, so the next time you have a brand new level, you have a brand new character, customers can see them right in the App Store and click on them and start the process to get them right away. And since games have their own tab, now apps have their own tab. This is everything that we love about apps besides games with dedicated features and charts all there for customers to enjoy. And every app and every game, of course, has its own product page in the store. These are more beautiful than ever, more engaging with incredible videos. You're going to love all the features on your product pages. And there's sessions here at WWDC to learn how to take advantage of all those great new app page features. But these are just some of the new things in the all new app store. The new Today tab, new Games tab, new Apps tab, and would love to show it to you live for the very first time. So please welcome Anti Product Marketing Manager for the App Store to the stage. And Thanks, Phil. I'm so excited to show you the new App Store. So let's get to it. I'm going to open the store, and I land right here on the Today tab, the new front of the App Store that updates every day. The first thing I see is our top story. The World premiere of Monument Valley 2 is finally here. Let's check it out by tapping on the card. This opens a story view where we can learn more about the game and what makes it so great. Looks like this is going to be even more beautiful than the first. I can watch videos that show me what the gameplay is like. And here's a cool quote from Dan Gray at Us Two Games about what inspired them. I can share the story with a friend, and what's incredible is that we can actually all download this today, only on the App Store. <laughs> Let's see what else is happening today. What have we got here? Oh, here's a how-to guide about Visco. I use this app all the time. Let's check it out. This is packed full of useful tips. So even if you have an app already, you still might learn something new. Like, I didn't know you could use it to make animated GIFs or GIFs. <laughs> anyway, you can make them. I just scroll back up and pull down on the card, and I'm back in the feed. Every day, there's a new app of the day, and a new game of the day, and the daily list. These are great because they're focused on a theme or a goal, like meditation. I've actually been trying some of these out to get ready for this, and it's totally working. If I'm busy and miss a day, I can scroll down and see stories from earlier in the week. So that's the Today tab. If I only want to see games, now I can go to the New Games tab. This is huge. Let's check it out. Up at the top, I can see the biggest new releases or just what the game editors are playing this week. If I scroll down, I can watch a whole bunch of game videos. And it's not just previews, but also tips and gameplay videos by editors, too. If I scroll down, I can see charts that only feature games, so it's really easy to see what the most popular games are separate from apps. And now I can browse by game categories, too. This page is just packed full of recommendations. This artsy game looks fun. Let's check it out. I'm going to tap on the icon, and it opens up a redesigned app page. It's more beautiful and more useful. I can watch more videos that show me how fun this is. And this badge at the top tells me it was named Editor's Choice. If I scroll down, I can see ratings and reviews front and center, so I can see what other customers think before making a choice, like this review. It tells me this game is great for killing time. Thanks, Furious Potato Face. <laughs> for all the incredible apps on the store, there's a new tab, too, the Apps tab, 
let's go there. It shares the same great design as the Games tab, but with a focus just on apps. So that was just the first day on the new App Store. Now you can see why we're so excited to have a beautiful new place to share apps and games we love with you. Back to you, Phil. Thank you, Anne. So that's your first glimpse of an entirely new app store. We hope you love it. We hope customers love it. They visit it every single day to download your incredible apps. And that's it for the app store. Back to you, Craig. Thank you, Phil. The app store looks just fantastic. So those are some of the big features in iOS 11. But of course, it's also core technologies. Now, Metal 2 and HEVC are coming to iOS as well. But there's more, and it starts with machine learning. Now, you've seen the way we've used machine learning throughout the experiences on Apple Watch, for instance, and the predictive Siri watch face. We use it on the iPad for palm rejection when you're writing with Apple Pencil. Of course, we use it to uh, extend your battery life by predicting how you're going to use your device. And you've seen it throughout photos with memories and face recognition. Well, now for all of you developers, we want to make powerful machine learning easy for you to incorporate in your apps. And we're doing it via a set of new APIs. Starts with the Vision API, which provides face tracking, face detection, landmarks, all of these core features we use inside of our apps. And the Natural Language API that provides capabilities like tokenization and named entity recognition. Now, these are all built on Core ML. And Core ML provides high performance implementations of deep neural networks, recurrent neural networks, convolutional neural networks, support vector machines. And they allow you to take models that you've built with any of these popular third-party tools and using our machine learning model converter, execute them with tremendous performance on device. That gives you all the data privacy benefits and all of the carefully tuned compatibility with all of our platforms. And the performance really is incredible. You look at this benchmark, it's called Inception V3. It's a popular photo recognition benchmark iPhone is six times faster than Google Pixel and the Samsung S8 using Core ML. Next, I'd like to turn to AR. Now, with multi-touch, we've really changed the way that you interact with the world on the screen of your iPhone. And with the camera, we've allowed you to capture the world around you. But when you bring these things together, the results can actually be quite profound. Now, it's called augmented reality, and we have a new core technology called AR Kit to bring it to all of you. And I'd like to show it to you in a demo now. So we've all seen a lot of carefully edited vision videos on this topic recently. But in this case, I'd like to show you something for real. So what we see here is an iPhone that's look, using its camera, but using vi computer vision, it's actually able to identify surfaces, such as this table, and I can actually just add an object. This is a developer application, a test application that you'll all be getting code for that allows you to do these things. Now, this is just a virtual object on this table. Now, Got some, some steam in there coming off the cup. Now, I can add other objects to the scene, and these things can actually interact. Let's add a lamp. And I want you to watch when I turn the lamp up on the dynamic shadows here. I'm going to move the cup and watch how the shadow moves in relationship to the light here. It's really pretty incredible. Now, I can add additional objects. Let's add a vase to this, uh, to this scene. I mean, isn't that just incredible? You guys are actually in the shot here with these objects all in augmented reality. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of the technology involved. It's really pretty incredible. Now, how do we do it? Well, AR Kit provides fast and stable motion tracking, and it uses all of the sensors and the camera on your device to do this. It actually finds planes like floors and tables. It's able to estimate ambient light, which helps us with the rendering, and also helps with scale. You notice that cup 
hit the table looking the size of a cup, not the size of an elephant. And we provide integration into all kinds of third-party frameworks to help you with your rendering. Now, the implementation is possible because we're able to take advantage of the awesome hardware and iOS devices, the cameras, the high-performance CPU and GPU, and the motion sensors. And when you bring the software together with these devices, we actually have hundreds and of millions of iPhones and iPads that are gonna be capable of AR. And in fact, that's going to make overnight ARKit the largest AR platform in the world. We've had some third parties in to take a look at ARKit, and they are totally excited, and we are just blown away by what they've been able to accomplish. IKEA, of course, is placing furniture everywhere, and it's really super awesome. <laughs> but check this out, what you can do with Batman Lego. I mean, how fun is this? Right on the table, a Lego with a live Lego, Batman, and you can explode the uh, Lego like, like uh, you can never do in the real world, pan around it, and interact with Batman right there. It's really awesome. And then Pokemon Go, well, we've all seen it before, but check it out with ARKid. The Pokemon is so real, he's right there on the ground. As the ball bounces, it actually bounces right there in the real environment. It's AR like you've never seen it before. Now, There's, there's one of these uh, that I think you just really need to see, see live. Now, Wingnut AR is director Peter Jackson's new production company. It's dedicated to producing AR content. Uh, we all know Peter Jackson from his incredible cinematic work on movies like the Lord of the Rings series, but he's now really excited about AR. And to show you what he has in the works, I'm thrilled to introduce Wingnut AR's creative director, Alistair Cool. Alistair. Thanks, Craig. We're really excited to share an exclusive sneak peek at something we've been working on. With ARKit, you don't need any special equipment or tracking markers, it just works. Dan's here with me from Wingnut AR, so let's take a look. Here we're using ARKit to detect the plane on the table, estimate its size, and lock our content onto the surface. And since this is augmented reality, you folks are all in the shot too. This is all rendered in real time using the power of Unreal Engine 4. We're at a remote outpost on a desolate world where supplies are scarce. Airships come here to refuel, get repairs, and to trade. These are our townsfolk. They're expecting some visitors soon, so they're all starting to get ready for their arrival. Except for this guy down here, apparently. Who hired him? That's how airships arriving now. And what's really cool here is that with the ARKit's tracking, you can get them really close and choose how to view the action. It's like you're the director of your own experience. Oh, looks like some raiders are attacking. I guess that takes care of that guy. Oh. Wouldn't it be cool to have airship battles like this in your own living room? Oh, I think they're gonna regret attacking this outpost. And another one down. And we got him. Well, that didn't end well for anyone. But our heroes are limping away to fight another day. So that's one of the things we've been up to at Wingnut AR. And the fact that AR kit, thank you. Thank you. The fact that AR kit enables hundreds of millions of people to enjoy experiences like this opens up so many possibilities. I think it's a real game changer. Look out for an AR experience from us in the App Store later this year. Thank you. So what do you think?
So those are some of the major features in iOS 11. Of course, there's much more than we have time to talk about today, but I want to highlight some features of special interest to our customers in China, like QR su code support integrated right into the main camera, accessible from the lock screen, super, use yes, super useful for customers in China. So that's our update for iOS 11. I'm going to turn it back to Tim. Thank you. That's right. iOS 11 is absolutely jam-packed with great features, and I can't wait for you to get your hands on the new App Store and AR kit. Number five, an important part of the iOS story is, of course, iPad. <laughs> 